What's going on Z Nation and welcome to another edition of ZSPN. I'm your host Zaid here and today guys we're going to be talking about the Los Angeles Lakers and the number four overall pick in this year's draft and just want to give you guys my final predictions of the selection that will go to the Los Angeles Lakers who will be the prospect that will go at the number four overall selection in this year's draft. Now, before anything, like always, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, share my videos all over Facebook, Twitter, all the good social media stuff. And guys, seriously, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate your thoughts and opinions when it came to the reports of David Griffin and just giving you guys, I just really love your feedbacks and uh, giving your thoughts and opinions about the Los Angeles Lakers and what they should do. What should they, should they do with the... Um, with this the type of situation with the Anthony Davis uh, type of trade and uh, the type of scenario that should go down when it comes to that sort of uh, opportunity comes. And before I get started about my predictions about uh, this year's draft and what sort of prediction and, and the prospect that, that would land with the Los Angeles Lakers with the number four overall pick, let me be very, let me be, be very clear when it comes to... Um, the situation that the Lakers are in there is a guaranteed chance that the Lakers will trade the number four overall pick there is a possibility and somehow if a trade does happen with Anthony Davis then there's no need for me to bring up this sort of uh, predictions for uh, this year's draft I can understand that and you guys are probably saying why bother but at the same time, you never know. Anything could happen. That The Lakers and the Pelicans might fall apart when it comes to a potential trade package. And uh, I don't know if that if a third team will be involved and somehow the Pelicans are not all in for uh, a trade for that. I don't know for that for that for that all star that that Dave Griffin is putting out there. But, you know, anything can change. I mean, maybe Dave Griffin will be like, hey, OK, fine, we can get, uh, you know, Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma, and, you know, the number four overall pick, and Mo Wagner, Isaac Bonga, and, you know, if, if if somehow they want Josh Hart, I mean, you never know. I mean, anything could change, and somehow a trade could happen, and uh, honestly, with the Lakers being the, the, the front runner for a potential trade to happen, um, then there's no need for me to bring up uh, the whole... Um, Predictions for number four overall pick, but you never know. So I want to give you guys my thoughts and my opinions about uh, the number four overall pick, and give you guys my uh, my thoughts about it because you know anything can happen. I mean, the Lakers would just uh, either draft a player and he will just develop with the rest of the young players, and you never know that the Lakers might just wait up uh, for Anthony Davis uh, for uh, for free agency in twenty twenty. I mean anything could change but at the same time there's reports and Adrian Dronowski put it out there that the Lakers are the basically the front runners to make a deal happen with the Pelicans for Anthony Davis so anything could happen so uh and guys please give me your thoughts about that uh, also I really appreciate your feedbacks when it comes to uh um uh, the Lakers situation and them being the front runners and do you guys really think that because you know Adrian Dronowski put out there that the Pelicans are expecting to make a trade happen possibly this weekend. So, uh, and, you know, it, it kind of makes sense because it gives them the opportunity to think more about the this year's prospects and who, what should, should they use with those picks if a trade does happen. And obviously it potentially will. So uh, if, if it does, so um Please give me your thoughts about that. But as of right now, I want to give you guys my thoughts, my opinions about uh, the the predictions for the number four overall pick. The Lakers can go anywhere with this. And with the type of prospects that are potentially going to be landing with the number four overall pick, like I mentioned in my previous videos when it came to that, all of these players that I'm mentioning, they are shooters. Now, uh, some of them are like maybe ranked around 30% uh, of their shooting ability. I forgot who it was. It's probably Cam Reddish. Or if it's, um, I, I believe maybe it's uh, uh, Jarrett uh, Cover. 
because he, you know, this year he only ranked around 30% of his threes. So, um, it still remains to be seen of where the Lakers might go with it. But in my own predictions of where the Lakers might go with this, if they do decide to keep the, the, the number four overall pick, they should either go with two players in mind. I mean, I have to say these two players are the main key players who are ready to go, who could, you know, contend for a playoff run and somehow just turn this franchise around when it comes to all said and done so number one on my list and I really think the Lakers should really consider him it is DeAndre Hunter from uh, Virginia who recently won uh, the NCAA uh, championship with them and plus he has a a defensive player of the year so uh, obviously with all said and done when it all comes down to it the Lakers need a ready now type of player that he's NBA ready and ready to go and I can honestly say when it's when it comes to uh, a hunter the guy knows how to defend and he knows how to you know he's a good shooter and he just he just comes as a as a ready player and I can honestly say when it all comes down to it the Lakers should consider um, DeAndre Hunter okay the guy is just uh, on a different level and I can honestly say when he's on the court and especially with the Lakers he would just be ready to go and just ready to uh, contend for a playoff run and also because he's more of a he draws in the comparison of a Kawhi Leonard but at the same time, uh, I just don't really uh, see that from him. But it will be very shocking if I really see that out of him. So I can honestly say, with his shooting ability and bringing that defense of his, uh, he kind of lacks the defense, but he can really develop that real quick. And I can honestly say from the coaching staff, from uh, the type of defensive-minded uh, coach that the Lakers have, from Frank Vogel to Jason Kidd, and also a recent hire from um, Lionel Hollins, uh, we can honestly say that they can really help this young guy to develop his defensive ability. And I can honestly say, from his shooting ability that he that he brought during his times with the uh, the Virginia Cavaliers, we can honestly say that he is um, he's he is on that level of being a ready player. And I can honestly see that from him. Uh, right away once he uh, plays in the NBA. And um, that's number one on my list. Number two, the Lakers should go with Darius Garland. Now, I know what y'all are thinking. Zade, why should we go with Garland when we have another a point guard in Lonzo Ball? Okay, that's just um, that just doesn't work out. But I can honestly say it does work out. If somehow Lonzo sticks around, he has the capability of working very well with Garland because Garland brings that shooting ability that he is well known for during his times in Vanderbilt and he is that one of those players that you just cannot pass on now he did suffer an injury during uh his times with the Vanderbilt and obviously he um you know it just cost him uh, his season uh of it and um most prospects ranked him at that time during his times with Vanderbilt around maybe number two or number three overall in this year's uh, selection. But then once his injury happened, uh, obviously it was um, not in the, in the, in the, uh, in the favor for Garland to uh, be ranked in those type of situations and uh, of, of the depth of that prospects. And I can honestly say Garland will work very well with the Los Angeles Lakers, bringing that, uh, Shooting the ability, and he sort of draws into comparison of a Damian Lillard. Uh, Damian Leonard, uh, the guy, uh, he draws into that sort of comparison, and um, you know he's just one of those type of players that that you just should not pass on when it comes to um, that type of situ- that type of uh, selection. And uh, I can honestly say, seeing uh, maybe possibly Garland, you know, going at number four. It would really help the Lakers shooting-wise. And I can honestly say see him um, 
work very well alongside uh, Lonzo Ball. And plus, he has a good relationship with LeBron James. Uh, he recently worked out with LeBron James a couple of days ago. So, and because obviously, with him signing with Clutch Sports, you instantly have a, a relationship with all players who are connected with Clutch Sports and with Rich Paul. So, and plus with LeBron James. So, uh, I can honestly say. Garland is on that list, and I heard from like uh, some reports from like executives saying that the Lakers put a promise on Darius Garland, and I can honestly uh, see that potentially happening. But if you have the opportunity to go, with, if you either have to go with uh, DeAndre Hunter or possibly uh, Darius Garland, the Lakers have to go with those two options. I mean. A probably probably a third option for the Lakers would have to be Jarrett uh, Culver because Jarrett Culver brings that defensive ability that the Lakers lacked and obviously with his shooting ability he does have that and uh, but even though he kind of lacked last season at uh, last season with the uh, uh, Texas Tech uh, he obviously brings uh, like 30 percent of his uh, shooting ability from the three and uh, he's like a wild card for me if the Lakers do decide to consider him but other than that uh, like people like um, players like uh, uh, Cam Reddish and uh, I'm thinking about somebody else uh, I'm probably missing somebody but um, obviously thinking about Cam Reddish uh, not being the conversation for the Lakers I kind of see that happening uh, I can also see him maybe possibly going number five with the Cavaliers, so uh, he might land there. Uh, obviously, with the rest of the top five selections, obviously Zion Williamson, he's going to go number one with the Pelicans, and uh, it's kind of going to be a obvious decision decision that the late that the uh, Pelicans are going to trade Anthony Davis, and it kind of seems that the Lakers are the front runners to be in play for Anthony Davis and that's why with the number four overall pick it kind of seems that the Lakers are going to uh, be trading the number four overall pick with the uh, potential all-stars in maybe Lonzo sorry uh, uh, Brandon Ingram Kyle Kuzma and you never know Lonzo possibly be involved but I guarantee you guys i I kind of see Lonzo still sticking around with the Los Angeles Lakers. I mean, it kind of seems that way. And if if the Lakers want to make a win out of this, they have to keep one of their young cores. And if that has to be Lonzo, Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma, then I'm all good for it. But at the same time, um, if the Lakers do add on Lonzo into this trade... It kind of defeats the purpose of making this trade happen. I mean, honestly, I don't really want to see Lonzo leaving because he has that opportunity to really improve this offseason. And he is working out very well. I saw a couple of videos of him uh, working out with a trainer that uh, helped players uh, bounce back from injuries. And obviously, uh, Lonzo is doing very well for himself to uh, achieve that sort of goal. And uh, obviously with having somebody like Jason Kidd on the staff and obviously the Lakers hired him for a reason is because of the connection of the comparison of him uh, during Lonzo's uh, time as a rookie being drawn the comparison of Jason Kidd. It kind of defeats the purpose of trading him anyway. So um, obviously Lonzo has to stick around. It fits well. It has to because... um, with his playmaking ability and defense, down the line, Lonzo will develop his shooting. I mean, it it will. It will definitely develop that uh, down the line. I mean, obviously, during his times in UCLA, he's been the top uh, of that team of of being a, a good shooter uh, during his times in UCLA. And obviously, I just kind of see some hope that Lonzo will stick around and uh, honestly, the best available package that the Pelicans need to accept from the Lakers is what they have, uh, that the Lakers have. I mean, it's Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma, um, obviously Mo Wagner, and uh, if he's involved. And um, obviously number four overall pick, and you also want to attach uh, 
another player to it and plus two future first round picks it will be the best package that the Pelicans have to have made possibly this weekend or maybe on draft night and I can honestly see that potentially happening on draft night uh I don't really see a deal being made this weekend. I mean, it kind of def- sees uh, the opportunity that, that the Lakers might do that. But if the Lakers are being true to be the, the front runners, then, then there is an the opportunity that the Lakers uh, have a chance of landing Anthony Davis. And I can honestly say, guys, it is the best opportunity for the Lakers to do so. And um, it kind of I kind of see that happening. But... With my own predictions of uh, number four overall pick going to the Lakers, uh, the the prospects, I mean, uh, it kind of I kind of see Hunter and Garland going number four. Those are the two best scenarios that the Lakers have to go with when it's all said and done. And uh, if the trade does not happen, they should go with those two, uh, either those two players. I, I will be uh, fine with the, with those two selections. If uh, the Lakers uh, do not uh, trade the number four overall pick, and if somehow it it kind of seems that way, the Lakers are going to trade the number four overall pick, but it still remains to be seen. So, guys, please uh, comment down below. I know I've been rambling, but uh, you know when it all comes said and done, uh, the Lakers are are the team that the Pelicans need to consider because the rest of the list of those players that are, are on the listing to uh, be in play for Anthony Davis, it just does not work out. I mean, the Clippers is the dead last. Number three is the Nets, which I don't really see any sort of assets that are fitting for uh, for the Pelicans and plus for Anthony Davis and plus, you know, he put out there. If he goes anywhere else, he is going to be a one-year rental. Paul, Rich Paul put it out there. Uh, I believe in an in a interview with uh, Sports Illustrated, uh, he did say that a team like the Celtics, he is putting it out there that he is going to be a one-year rental. So obviously, so it was all said and done. Uh, all teams that are listed as suitors to potentially make a trade for Anthony Davis has a risk when it comes to, uh, you know, trading for AD and the best team that has the opportunity to do so is the Los Angeles Lakers now I don't really see the New York Knicks being involved because they don't have good assets to make a trade like that uh, they have the only assets they have that's best for the Pelicans is the number three overall pick which I don't really see any sort of assets being attached of this package deal will basically go down. I don't really see that happening. Now, there could be a possibility that the the Knicks might ask for another team to give a little bit more for uh, for them to make a trade happen, but I don't really see that happening. That's why the Los Angeles Lakers, with the assets, with the young core, and if somehow a team does decide to trade an all-star uh, for a return for, I'm not sure, like a, I don't know, one of the, the Lakers uh, players, or uh, a future first round selection. I mean, it still remains to be seen what sort of package deal that uh, that 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 the third team will accept from the Lakers. But uh, other than that, guys, please comment down below. I mean, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to the Lakers situation. And I gave you guys my my predictions of the number four overall pick. If you guys agree with me that either Garland or Hunter or a distant third in Culver will be the, the the best scenario for the Lakers to go with the number four overall pick if they do decide to keep the number four overall pick because of the if something goes wrong with the whole package deal for uh, Anthony Davis with the Pelicans. Um, please, guys, comment down below. Give me your thoughts about it. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I brought up. And I kind of noticed that I kind of stumbled on a couple of things. Please forgive me. But, you know, when it's all comes said and done, uh, there's a lot of t- a lot of things to talk about when it comes to the Los Angeles Lakers and the type of situation that they're in. I mean, if they are the top uh, contenders for Anthony Davis, then um, there's a lot of things to consider 
lots of things to uh, recommend if the Lakers uh, do decide to trade their young players and their assets uh, for Anthony Davis and somehow a team does come in, come into play. Some of y'all put uh, the Washington Wizards. I don't really see the Washington Wizards being involved for a potential trade for Bradley Beal. I mean, I don't really see that happening. Uh, it's just because it, also it would have to involve Lonzo Ball when it all said and done. And I know some people might say, hey, we can go in free agency and get a Kemba Walker or uh, a Kyrie Irving. I mean, it's all said and done. It's all good. But at the same time, guys, I am a fan of Lonzo, and I kind of see him thriving with the Los Angeles Lakers with his uh, playmaking, defensive ability, and, you know, he does have the shooting ability, but he just needs to work on that. But at the end of the day, um, I really want to see Lonzo stick around. And uh, and if somehow another team comes, in, comes into play for uh, an opportunity to be uh, involved in this Anthony Davis trade, um, I kind of welcome it, but it kind of depends on who that team is and uh, would they be asking for uh, Lonzo or just somebody that will uh, obviously be a huge impact for the Los Angeles Lakers. I mean, still remains to be seen. So guys, please uh, comment down below. Uh, I really appreciate your thoughts and opinions about the Los Angeles Lakers and the situation that they're in with Anthony Davis and the whole trade scenario. And guys, please give me your predictions. If the Lakers do decide to keep the uh, the number four overall pick, do you guys think it's uh, Garland, uh, Hunter, or a distant third, possibly uh, Culver? I mean, please, guys, comment down below. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Go Lakers. Take it easy.